the Finnish phenom himself. Terrell has pounced over here, and I don't know that Sue could take this in any fashion. I feel he's taken the StarCraft scene by storm. Dude, Rainer is everywhere. Like an income to Banelings. Things could get very messy very quickly here. Been a while since we've seen someone take Terrell to this stage of the game. 3-0 versus Sue. Rainer has moved on to the round of four. Can you take down Serral to make it to the grand finals, yes or no? Obviously. Big words there from Reyna, our only other WCS champion. He says he can take down Serral, obviously, like it's a surprise. That's absolutely not the case. We've seen him do it a couple times this year, but now he's going to put his money where his mouth is. Yeah, Rainer versus Serral. It feels a little bit like if you follow the WCS circuit throughout the entire year, here we go again, because it's pretty much been those two all year long. Of course, Rainer got a couple of victories, but make no mistake, Serral still has a winning record over Rainer. And the last two times they played against each other, a 4-0 in the final of Challenger, a 4-1 in the final of Montreal. So, yes, Rainer has done it. He's done it before. He can do it. But Serral, I mean, all numbers favor him. Yeah, not recently is the big question here. And Serral's yet to actually lose a map in this tournament. <laughs> he's actually, oh my God, yeah. he's actually <laughs> really, really, really amazing. Yeah, Roddy just realized that, and I just realized that too, which is why I said it. He actually hasn't even dropped a map yet. So will Rainer be the first one to make God bleed? We're only minutes away from finding out. You know, the beautiful thing when these two play against each other is that it does often seem to bother Serral a little bit more when he loses to Rainer than when he loses to anybody else. And I don't know what that causes or where that comes from, but Serral does not, I mean, doesn't like losing in general, but it always feels when it's against Rainer, it stings just a little more. The uh, list of people that have eliminated Serral from tournaments in the last couple of years is extremely short. Mm -hmm. Rainer is the one that's done it the most the WCS circuit. He's the only one that seems to be able to defeat Serral, and vice versa. Serral also the only one that seems to be able to eliminate Rainer. Yeah, I mean, these two were almost bound to happen. We're bound to meet again here at the Global Finals. It's going to happen in the semi. Some people even thought that this could have very well been the final. And like the boys on the desk said as well, that's crazy, right? Like if you would have imagined this a couple of years ago, two non-Koreans in the final of BlizzCon, that's never going to happen. Well, they're not meeting in the final, but these two are clearly something very, very special. It really is quite poetic to have these two players fighting each other on the way to the, to the, to the big seat, the big finale here for StarCraft II Season 2019. And it seems like when it comes to WCS, both these players can win. And last I checked, WCS is at the beginning of this tournament's title. So this is their <laughs> stomping grounds. Yeah, absolutely it is. We're taking a look at the map pool. Triton is going to be our first map. Then we'll have all those sleepers, Ephemeron, and maybe if we need it, Acropolis and Disco Bloodbath. Obviously in ZVZ, I mean, there is stylistic things that we can talk about. I think in general, we know that the longer games go, the more it seems to favor Serral. But we'll talk more about it. It's time to hop into the semifinals. All right, in the top left from Finland, several time WCS champion, GSL vs. the World multiple time champion, and reigning world champion. Give it up for Serral! In the bottom right, he's only been in the WCS circuit what feels like a year and a half or so, but he's already improved so much. He is one of the best players in the entire world at the tender age of 17. Give it up for Gamer Origins, Raider! I'm actually starting to feel the energy, buddy. I'm getting hyped for this one now. I mean, it's the impossible crowd, not the atmosphere. to be hyped. I mean, these two are just awesome, right? Rainer in every interview, you love him more and more. The more you watch of his gameplay, the more you get inspired by such a young man who also seems to be quite unshaked by anything that really happens to him, right? He's just unfazed. He's also calm. And then you have Serro. I mean, what Serro has done, I have never ever seen in RTS before in the last two years, being that dominant, winning almost everything he participates in. And when he wins, it's never bumping and bruising. It's never lower bracket, losing a couple series in the group stage, no. Most of the time when Serral wins, he just wins everything, and that's insane. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I was so excited by, uh, you know, I'm such a fan of Serral in 2018, uh, apart from the fact that obviously he's the world champion, the best player of the year, <laughs> that helps, is that, you know, that definitely helps. But even just the fact that his finals and, and a lot of his matches are on the way to the finals have been really exciting. You know, they have been back and forth. They have been bloodbaths, as our brother Pig would call them. They've just been an entertaining series. It's not really a whitewash. It's also, it has a lot to do with the way that Saro, I think, has approached StarCraft over the last few years. Yes, he can switch it up. Yes, he can be aggressive. 
But when it comes to very late game, he is the very best. And Absolutely. if you are the very best in late game, there's no need for you to get crazy. So often, Serral just kind of sits back, builds up invincible armies, and he will defend attack after attack, and he'll look good in doing so, right? But that makes for exciting openings, because it's one player like running around the map, trying to attack the main, the natural, the third, in many different ways, and Serral is just almost like a ninja, just swiping everything away. It is awesome to watch, and it makes for fantastic StarCraft. And we're going to see the plans both players sort of round out here. So far, a very, very mirrored opening for uh, Reyna and Serral. Just an extra drone here, an extra link there. Bit of a scuffle in the middle of the map with Reyna coming out on top. Like, I'm almost more curious about what Reyna is going to bring to this semifinals than Serral, because we know where Serral's strengths are. It's pretty much everything, but especially that <laughs> late game. Reyna, on the other end, in the past, he's had success with rushing, right? With crazy builds, pocketing a bunch of Zerglings, going into Mudas quickly when Serral didn't see it, stuff like that. I feel most of the time when Reyna plays very standard, it doesn't go that well for him when he goes up against Serral. But Reyna is still so freaking young, he is improving tournament after tournament. Ooh. So is Serral going to be the more aggressive yeah. one? Or is Reyna is actually just going to bring the game to Serral? It's like, all right, let's play your game. And I actually believe that I have now reached the level that I need to defeat you in a best of five on the biggest stage. It does seem like Serral wants to go for the rush here. He's sending Lings across the map. Reyna obviously sees it with his scouting Ling as well. And Baneling Nest is going to finish off with both players around the same time. We're just several slightly later, but of course, he's going to be making Banelings in Reyna's face, not at home. And he's going for the Evo Chamber as well as Reyna. So both players very similar, but Serral trying to put some pressure on a third. Reyna seems pretty ready for it, though. The Banelings coming on down to secure that base. Yeah, I believe a couple of Banes are morphing here on the left side for Serral. Yep. Those were the links that he sent across the map a little bit earlier. This is where you don't want to make any mistakes if you're Reyna, because you don't want to start falling behind. Serro, of course, is building a lot of drones at home, so this is not an all-in. He doesn't really need to get a lot of damage done here. It's maybe just testing the waters, right? And let's yeah, see. Whoa, we apparently Whoa. two Banelings were able to wiggle into the natural. That's massive. Seven drones. That is indeed very, very big. That's not the way you want to start your semis. Damn, uh, happened so fast we didn't even see it there. Seven drones going down, and now Rain is going to put a bit more love to catch up with that economy. And a great Baneling connection from Serral as well. Ooh, that's... That feels bad for Reyna here. He's just going to kind of pull back with his tail between his legs. The timing of that Bane finishing up, right? Like, is that luck? <laughs> is that skill? A little bit of both, maybe? I don't know. But it's old Serral. Out. That's what yeah. that is. But I love it, right? Because the way that Serral just did that, none of it was really committed. None of it was really like, oh, I need to get a lot of damage done. He's just kind of morphing Banes on the left side. You focus on those Banelings. You keep track of the Zergling movement. And suddenly, surprise, surprise, two Banelings ran into his natural and killed seven more. Another nice family connection there. Reyna trying to hit the cluster of Lings for Serral. Neither of them got any Carapace upgrades on these Lings or any attack upgrades or anything like that. So they're very even. So it uh -oh. comes down to army supply quite a bit. Reyna's natural in a bit of trouble here. He's about to run quite low on units as well. I mean, he's got Bane Lings, but that's about it. Reyna, did he keep track of those Lings morphing in the main base? I think he did. Yeah, he's yeah, got he's two Bane Lings there ready. But there are still Lings. The Queen went down. This is actually going quite bad. And don't forget about the Banes in the main. Well, Rain is coming down to intercept, but one Baneling will not finish them off, so they're going to start walking into that mineral line. He goes for the emergency Evo chamber. All right, Rainer manages to mitigate most of this. This is so oh, much so damage, it's, man. Yeah. The multiple drones have gone down. The he's down 10 drones. drones. Yeah, and he's not mining now either. All of this really adds up in his EVZ. Zero taking a massive lead just six minutes into the first game while investing very, very little. Look at these trades. <laughs> absolutely horrifying for the Italian Zerg. Serral absolutely... Put him on the back foot here, and now Reyna is playing catch-up, and this is the last player in the entire planet that you want to play catch-up against. Yep, Saru in general very good at analyzing his uh, advantages as well. Can obviously, as soon as the road speed upgrade is ready, can start trying to get a little bit aggressive, just move to the other side of the map. He can go up to four bases very comfortably, while for Reynor, the priority is going to be defending, because Reynor knows he's going to have to work with less roaches for quite some time. And he does, of course, catch up with those upgrades, but he, like Roddy mentioned, he's going to be doing it off the back of a drier economy. Serral's got, uh, I mean, he's basically lighting cigars with $100 bills over on his side of the map. <laughs> very rich, he can throw away a few things here and there, but of course, Serral very rarely will do that. He's very, very good, I feel like, just picking engagements and knowing when he'll win a fight. Oh, hiding some banelings yeah. to the left-hand side here. I'm not sure if Raynor actually saw that. I believe I don't think they so. were in vision for a split second, but then Serral moved them away again. It's important that Reyna does not get fooled again. What Serral will often do, by the way, is he will set attacks like this up. He'll run roaches to the middle of the map, so you look at it's like, what's coming to me? What does? And then you look at those roaches and suddenly the banelings or an overseer, just anything to distract his opponent. These Ooh. two banes will connect as well. Bam! Just like that, eight more drones going down. I think Serral's killed like 30-something drones this game already, which in a mirror matchup is really quite incredible. 
great damage here from the Zerg. Well, just the 20 feels worse, but I guess that's what it's like when you're on the other end of this. Yeah. I mean, the Nidus is going down now as well, so that's going to allow Serral to reinforce a lot quicker if he wants to start getting aggressive. Of course, you can utilize Nidus in many different ways. You can just utilize it as a way to get the reinforcements to the battle a little bit quicker. Serral's got to be very, very happy with everything that has happened so far in this game. He knows it. I mean, he's the world champ for a reason, and I think that he's feeling very confident that he's about to end this. Yeah, he's up 24, actually just 20 army supply here. He's got Ravages as part of his army as well. Reyna does have some of his own. But Serral just has more forces. A lot of that is actually in production. He's got nine more roaches on the way. Similar deal for Reyna here. And with this Nidus Worm, even if things go badly for Serral, he can just pull out. Yeah, but he can also use it to reinforce. And don't exactly. forget that during all of this, Serral could also pop a Nidus in the main base. And if Reyna does not leave any units inside of his main base, that could be very deadly as well. Yeah, Nidus Worm is popping up on the east side, so Serral can dart left and right and hit wherever Reyna's army is not. Reyna does not have the advantage of mobility here with a lack of a Nidus Worm on his side of the map. And Serral is just barreling through here. Nidus Worm not even needed at this point. He is just pushing through Reyna's defenses. Yep, I believe we have a Nidus going up in the back of the main base. Reyna is also getting pulled apart with a couple of roaches on the left side. Serral's just having a ball right now. He's having fun. He is picking Reyna apart. And this is not just a victory, but it seems like a very, very convincing game one victory as well. Now, like I said, you do not want to be playing catch up against this kid because he does not throw away leads. Not like this, not in the round of four of his tournament. In he comes there, winning every single battle on the left and on the right. And Serral still yet to bleed. 10-0 in this tournament so far, the WCS Global Finals. Just another ladder session for this guy. This one just pays very well. Look at him. Not a drop of sweat. Not a single showing of nerves. Hands stable. And he's not even muttering to himself, which he normally does, even when he loses maps, because he's upset about something that he did wrong in that game. Clearly, very little went wrong in that game for Serral. I think from the very get-go, having a couple of Banelings running into the natural, we did not see it on camera. But the moment that Serral can get just a little thing like that going early on, like he's so confident. Like Serral is quite confident in his interviews these days, but in his gameplay, I feel like he's a lot more confident than he even tells us. And that's often all he needs, right? Like you give the man a finger, he's going to take your game. <laughs> <laughs> he'll take your hand and then he'll take your forearm and your shoulder. Exactly. Uh, yes, that is the story of Serral here is once again, as Roddy mentioned, and we've got to reiterate this, 10 and 0 in the biggest and toughest tournament of the year. Yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, but what? Uh, But not surprising, which is also ridiculous. There is still a lot of hope, though, for Reyna. Reyna has done yes. this before. He's been behind against Serral before as well in the series. And I think one of the most telling things of the year was during summer. Serral was up 2-1 in the best of seven grand finals back then. Serral was playing excellent in game four. He was actually playing better than Reyna. They both had all the tools available. And Serral was slowly but steadily picking Reyna apart. Then he made one error, one judgment error. Reyna was able to steal that game away, and I could see it at his face back then. I was like, oh my goodness, he's actually so upset right now, and he fell apart back then, so could happen again. Yeah, I mean, Roddy actually su super nailed it. For all the Reyna fans out there that are feeling worried, don't be worried, he's got a couple lives left in the bag here, and he's 100% correct. There is one player in this world that can life tilt Serral with one map, it is Reyna. Yes. This cocky little Italian will, will make <laughs> Serral start to sweat. He's done it once before, and he'll probably do it again. And let's get into game number two, guys. In the top right here, currently up in the series, your reigning world champion from NC Sports. Give it up for Serral! In the bottom left, the Italian Zerg in the blue, representing Gamers Origins, and more than willing to tie up the series, and he has those skills to pay the bills. Give it up for Rainer! World of Sleep is, of course, an interesting map where a couple of weird and crazy gimmicky strategies are possible. But the last time that these two went up against each other on this map, Raynor tried one of those very weird builds, and it did not work out at all. He basically saved up 48 Zerglings, but it all just, like, it didn't connect. It hit a little bit too late. And even Raynor afterwards said, he's like, I have no idea what I was doing there. <laughs> like, he's like, that didn't make any sense at all. So I'm not expecting Raynor to do anything among those lines. I think it's going to be a little more of the same. But what we saw in the previous game, I would have loved to be, uh, loved to see Reyna be the one to make those first links. Mm. Right? Not, not an all in, not crazy link bane aggression, but just get those first units out there and try to start making plays on the other side of the map. Because as much as I believe that Serro is the greatest StarCraft 2 player in the world, I believe Reyna can absolutely hold his own in the first 10 minutes of the game and can even find weaknesses and holes in the defenses of Serro as well.
I mean, in fact, the, the early game of Raynor is normally so strong yep. that it was really, really crazy to see that much drone damage happen. To see two Banelings just yep. walk into a natural, kill seven drones is unprecedented. Normally he sees that, normally he snipes that or blocks it with a queen, anything yeah. among these lines. But it's, of course, the pressure as well. Sero has been here before on this stage. He is the reigning world champ. For Raynor, this is the first time he was so freaking close to qualifying last year. One but map. he fell one map short. Oh. So, and, and I mean, yes, he, he has gone up against Sero plenty of times, but this is still different. Yeah, this is for all the marbles, the biggest prize purse they've both fought each other for. And it is just very standard for both these players here in World of Sleep. This is a very, very large map, as is the story for a lot of these maps here in this map pool. And uh, we're not seeing any craziness, nothing at all. Both players really respecting each other's early game uh, play style, at least for now. I would love to see this game go like a little bit more even into that mid phase, right? In the six, seven minutes when, let's say, they're both at 50 plus drones, they start getting their upgrades for the roaches. Because Raynor is an absolute master as well when it comes to splitting off roaches, finding openings, you know, setting up cool surrounds and stuff like that. It's a pretty quick baneling nest here from our boy Cyril going down. Raynor opting not to get it just yet. I mean, the both players are going up the three bases as you usually do, and there is a baneling nest as part of this build order usually. Yeah, every now and then Zerg players like to just make 20 Zerglings or 18 Zerglings, run to the other side of the map and skip out on the Bane Nest and go straight into the Roach Warren. If you can get away with it, it's fantastic. And this is exactly what Raynor is doing. However, if Serral sees this immediately, Serral could decide to become very aggressive with Lings and Banes. And the Roaches in low numbers, like two, three Roaches, are not that good against Lings and Banes. You need more. Serral's making quite a few Lings here, Maynard. Yeah, I mean, even without uh -oh. scouting this play from Reyna, he is actually might just be uh, lucky with his choice of strategy here. Reyna coming down, oh, he's actually coming across the map with his lings. The banelings, oh, actually pulled back. He, he tries to save these lings, but of course they are going to get beaten back. And Reyna successfully keeping Serral on his side of the map, making this road strategy look all right. Yeah, but still more and more Zerglings are on the way for Serral. That's exactly what you want to do if you're in Serral's position, because I think he still has a couple of lings and banes morphing on the other side of the map as well. Reyna starts making his first roaches immediately. Once again, two banelings are going to try to find a way into the natural. Rut row. Okay, this time Reyna sees it. He splits his drones as well as he can. Loses two there. Not too bad for Reyna. Actually, a pretty solid defense, all things considered. Gets to the main base and gets a good scout off the main of Serral as well. Serral, of course, not done. He's got a lot of links coming across the map. Reyna needs to buy time for those roaches. Yeah, it's more than not done. Serral's really committing here. Reyna actually went back to building a couple of drones, which I would say is a little bit ambitious because these bases are not that connected. The roaches are good, but Serral is not necessarily always going to fight where the roaches are. So this is it. Serral really needs to start finding some economic damage here. Otherwise, he falls pretty far behind. And Reyna just needs to hold on. He's starting to squeeze out a few more drones, but not before 16 more zones will be made. He has so much army supply of Ling Bane, but primarily Lings here. Starting to throw in a few more Bane Lings. All the seconds could go past. Reyna is going to have more and more roaches. I mean, the roach count is starting to look pretty good for the young Italian here. Serral not 100% sure whether or not he should go for the hatch tree. He's hoping that Reyna oh. makes a mistake with unit positioning, but so far the Italian is not doing that. Yeah, Reyna doing a great job at intercepting the links of Serral. If Serral has any opening gear, he's going to flood those links on through and rip the throat out of Reyna. Going for his own ro Roach Warren back at home and trying to catch up with those drones. Lings trying to go through the natural. Once again, Reyna's zoning beautifully. Yep, really good defense this game by Reyna. I mean, just a lot better than in the previous game. Only losing two drones against the first Banes. And other than that, making the Roaches at the right moment and putting them in the right places. This may not have looked that scary, but if you make one big arrow with your Roaches, that could be it. The game could be over, they could get surrounded. Rain are not making those mistakes. Serral still with so many lings and banes out of the map here, but of course, they're not finding an opening. These roaches of Reyna can actually, especially with a choke point, take an extremely good trade. And he's squeezing out a lot more drones as well. Reyna really taking a huge economic lead here. Yeah, Serral does have the much quicker plus one on the way, right? And upgrades are big for roaches. We have seen that time and time again. Reyna will now fire off his own plus one, but he's a solid minute behind. Serral thought for a second there, maybe get those links through the drone line, but didn't want to lose much of his army to the Roaches of Reyna, which have always been waiting for this sort of uh, backstab strategy from Serral. This is quite crazy though, 15, 16 worker advantage on the side of Reyna, that's massive. Serral made an insane amount of Zerg links, but just couldn't find the damage that he was looking for. Uh, it's obviously, these games are get, getting quite weird, right? Because this map, you have that base in the middle of the map with those rich Vespian geysers. Things get a little different, units start being made at the wrong moment, so I'm not sure if Serral or Reyna necessarily knows in the position, or like what kind of position they're in. 
Yeah, it is a little bit hard to see. You know, usually trademark style of both these players is that they'll get a ling or two into the main base of their opponent. Uh, Raider's been the one to get into the main of Serral, kind of, but uh, once again, just doing a great job zoning these lings. There's so many lings here at Serral which have honestly been quite useless so far, apart from just being a threat. The only thing that Serral could do with it is if Raider decides to move out, obviously Zerglings are a fantastic counter-attack unit. You can just run them straight into the main base, into the natural, and then maybe buy some extra time that Serral needs to survive. Because finally, Serral has caught up in the work account, but for the last minute and a half, two minutes in this game, Raynor mined quite a bit more, and he still has more roaches as well. Also, even though Raynor's lair was a lot earlier, Serral is actually ahead with upgrades because of that faster plus one. And his roach speed is also around the same time as Raynor's as well, so that lair advantage not really an advantage at all for Raynor. It's very, very even in that regard, but with the upgrades, Serral with a bit of an edge. And Serral is going to try to see what's happening in the main base. Of course, you always have to worry about spires, and this map is different because of that rich Vespian gas. So you want to keep a close eye on what's happening in the main base. I like, I, even though, like, Serral made all those links, what I do like is that he wasn't stubborn with those links, right? Ooh. He didn't throw them away when he could have. He's like, no, 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 I, I'm going to save them because at this point I can't get anything done. So Serral is going to use it to counterattack, but does Serral have enough roaches at home to survive? I don't know, man. That is so many roaches here from Reyna. And even with the Ravages, it's going to be so hard to deal with the roaches are armored. They do hit pretty hard. They have a lot of hit points. The links are going to try to counterattack right. one more time. This is nice, but Reyna needs to be more decisive. If he wants to attack, he needs to start going for it. His upgrade is done. Raynor, it's go time. He's going to come on in here. Serral just trying to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but Raynor definitely has the Roach advantage. He's got a concave to the north side of Serral's army. The Ravager's throwing out some vials. None of them really connecting here. Serral's face is under a lot of threat here, Roddy. Yep, the god can bleed after all. He's 10-0 in this tournament, but Raynor is looking very good in this fight. Still having the better concave there as well, taking care of the gas, getting the first couple of drones. Reinforcements from Serral coming on through. Defense advantage is huge in CBC, but it may just not be enough. He stutter steps right in front of Raiden's army, but the reinforcements coming in from the Italian. Gonna tie a bow on this one. GG! Rainer! The first one to take a map of Serral. And of course it's Rainer. Of course he's gonna be the one that does it, because that's what 2019 has been. It has been the Serral and Rainer show. It started already in 2018, right? It started in Valencia back then. It continued in Montreal in a very big way. These two are just so evenly matched when it comes to going up against each other on these big stages. And Reyner just looked so much better, right? He just kind of forgot about game one completely. That wasn't his game. A couple of unforced errors in the beginning that shouldn't have happened, but that definitely didn't bother him here in game two. Everything that Reyner did in the first few minutes, I think it was perfect. And he just played it out in a very clean way. All right, before we get into game number three, we take a short break. Guys, when we return, Reyner versus Serral will continue. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of BlizzCon. Facebook Gaming, a world of play. Samsung SSD, performance gamers trust. Corsair, do your thing. And by NVIDIA.
G'day StarCraft fans, we are back for this WCS champion throwdown between Reyna and Serral. And Roddy and I were just talking to each other, we just realized that this place is packed to the rafters with StarCraft Passion Lords out there, and of course Passion Queens. Now, I want you to participate here with the game crowd. Do you think that Reyna is going to win this series? One more time, do you think that Reyna is going to win this one? Or do you think that Serral is going to run away with this one? Okay, okay. Ooh, we got some love for the GOAT out there. They want that back-to-back -back championship. I mean, we've never seen it. There is no. one player who has won two of these beautiful BlizzCon championships, and that's, of course, SOS. But he took a year's sabbatical in the middle of it. He was close back then as well, but he wasn't able to go all the way. I mean, if Serro gets it done, it would be marvelous. I think the next game is going to be super freaking important. We didn't see Serro on screen, but I took a look over and he was shaking his head a little bit. Like, we have seen it before. Serro in general is an unmovable object in these tournaments. Nothing really seems to shake him up too much. Even though he likes to talk to himself after he loses games, it's something about that young Italian that really gets to him. And if Raynor can somehow take a 2-1 lead here, Maynard, ooh, then it's going to be very difficult. Oh, and every map matters, but in this series, it feels like every time Serral loses less and less of that magical power that he seems to have to just look way better than his opponent, it starts to sort of seep out of his body. Raynor, off the back of that win, we know that he likes to ride that momentum as well. We've seen some reverse damage from this kid in series as well. I mean, if you talk about momentum, being, <laughs> being the first player in this entire tournament, to take a map of Serral, that already feels good, right? You know that he's 9-0 going into this series. You know that he's 10-0 after he takes game one, and then you are the first one to make him bleed. I mean, that feels good. That is all the momentum you would normally need to hopefully keep that going. Cannot wait for games here in Ephemeron. Of course, you know, a bit more of a shorter map, shorter rush distance, yeah. but it's a mirror map, so it doesn't really matter too much. This is kind of one of those maps where, you know, obviously Road Travager is a bit more of a thing, but this is one of those maps where I actually feel like uh, I've seen a little bit of, of Muta play in a few yeah. series lately. You know, Muta's have been throwing their way back into this matchup again, uh, where it felt like for a while it was just not something that people like to use, except for a couple Zergs that really like that stylistic difference. I honestly find it quite unique that we just watched two games between Raynor and Serral, and we haven't seen a single Spire yet, because that's mm. normally what it is, right? Raynor goes into the Spire a little bit quicker, tries to play something different, I love these shots. Look at these two getting ready. Well, they have got their game faces on, Roddy. It is serious business <laughs> yeah, right yeah. here <laughs> on this beautiful stage here, the Anaheim Convention Center in the arena where this game belongs. Let's get into it, guys. Reyna and Serral, one of these guys, about to take a map advantage and head towards match point in just a few short moments. In the bottom right here, the finished Femom. You made noise from before. Can you do it again? I think you can. This is NC Sports' is Serral. <laughs> and in the top left, the only one that can make this god bleed so far in this tournament. Make some noise for the Italian Zerg, Reyna. And quite telling so far that in both games, Serral was the first player to really make units, right? Of course, Reyna made a couple of safety links early on, but in both games so far, it's been Serral making the 20 plus Zerg links, making the Bing links on the other side of the map, and trying to force out errors. Worked fantastically in game one, did not work at all in game two. And now I wonder in game three, are we going to see a more defensive Serral? Is he just going to be like, why am I actually doing this? You know, Serral is the best late game ZVZ player in the world by far. I think everybody would agree with that, but it's hard to get to that real late game, right? Like people often think late game is like when they both have a big army. No, no, no. Like when they're both tier three and they have all the upgrades and they've got money in the bank. Like that's a different kind of late game. Feels like ever since Zerg's got really good at walling in their naturals, especially in these maps that they have a bit more of a choke point once the creep gets a little bit further forward. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot easier for players that are a little bit more cheekier to sneak something on them. You know, like uh, Sue tried to do that, hiding a Spire in his, uh, in his EVZ against Serral earlier. You know, it's a very, very hard gotcha strategy. But even just like you said, playing a standard game, but just being a little bit more defensive. Maybe you don't that cut that corner here, you don't cut that corner there. You just trust in your ability to outplay your opponent when it gets down to that four bases, 70 drones sort of late game. You know, the funny thing is, if you go back to the previous game, it, it felt that what Serral was doing is the right thing on paper, right? Baneling nests are important, roaches are good, but they're not good in very small numbers. Serral was making a lot of circlings, a lot of banings. Sure, the drone count was quite high, but it wasn't super high. So I was really shocked to see that he wasn't able to get anything done. Like, I feel 
Maybe if he would have been a little more decisive, just go for it, run 20 links into the main, and then send all the reinforcements towards the third base of Raynor. It would have been a lot more doable for Saro to find the damage that he was looking for. But I don't want to say that he was second-guessing himself, but it was a little bit of like he went in a couple of times and then he disengaged, right? Realizing that that wasn't the, wrong, uh, the right moment. But the more you do that, obviously, the, the less likely it is that you're going to find the right moment eventually. Yeah, I remember him saying in the cast, it's like the longer this goes, the guy that has the Roach Warren is going to be much, much better for them and much, much easier for them because then once they get enough Roaches, they can just pull those Roaches apart, defend in the natural, defend in the third base, especially in World of Sleepers where that natural, once it's got that sort of Zerg wall in its structures, you can, just choke, you can just handle those choke points so easily against what feels like an infinite amount of links. So far, there is no Baneling uh, nest yet on the side of Saro. So maybe Saro is taking a page out of Raynor's playbook. There we see 12 Zerglings, still no Baneling nest. There is a Baneling nest on the side of the young Italian. Let's see how this plays out. The tables are turned. Mm -hmm. Everything we saw in the previous game is now happening again, but then the other way around. Yeah, Saro going to have the... Uh well, it seemed to be the Roach Warren play, but he just gets the Bailey Nest a little bit later. You can still get a Roach Warren after this if you want to just put on the source here on your opponent, but at the moment, he's still just prioritizing links here. Very odd timing for a Bailey Nest. Yeah, a little bit late. Mm -hmm. now, obviously, these things can play out in a big way as well if your opponent is not expecting it anymore. I don't know if Raynor has scouted it already or not. Raynor very de uh, defensively there, morphing a couple of veins. He's going to be more than fine. Sarah has a few extra Zerglings out, but... The difference isn't big. Just getting one or two drones here would already be a good start for the reigning world champ. Yeah, he has a few drones behind at the moment because he does made a, a big round of links. Vainly trying to intercept, but not really worth it there for Reina. He gets a ling into the main and also into the natural. Very annoying for Serral. Much quicker lair probably on the side of Reina in this and game. Taking fast. extra gases uh -oh. as well. We mentioned we haven't seen a single Spire yet. This could very well be it. Could also just be Roaches. Could also be both. Could be, <laughs> could be so many things. I mean, you're absolutely right. I just warned us. I mean, it's been good all weekend, right? Like, no, no. <laughs> Probably not going to see that. My strategy is undefeated so far. But, <laughs> um, the, I mean, three gas can mean a lot of things. Upgraded roaches uh, is, is usually, I'd say, eight times out of ten what it's going to be. And the roach warren does drop down here for Raynor. So I mean, also in general, you kind of... You always want to have a roach one, right? Like, I, otherwise, like if your opponent just makes a whole bunch of roaches or nice is you to the other side of the map, there's simply nothing you can do about it. But look at that on the side of Raynor. Plus one melee is being researched. That is not the upgrade that we expect. That's not the upgrade you normally see. This roach one could be a bit of a fake, where he's actually just going to make an insane amount of zerglings and goes for that spire, Maynard. So it was both. <laughs> yes, plus both indeed. And also a shout out to all of you World of Warcraft nerds out there. Apparently the World of Warcraft stream has ended and was gracious enough to host the greatest esport of all time. So thank you very much and welcome. Hope you guys enjoy the games. I am Maynard with me as Rotterdam. And you are watching the two champions of WCS, our big international circuit outside of Korea, face off here in the semifinals. I really like this strategy so far from Reyna. I don't think Saro is picking up on it yet. I'm not exactly sure what Saro is going to do the moment he realizes it. I think by the time he truly knows what he's playing against, it's going to be too late. Right? Look at Reyna, he's also starting Roach Speed. I don't know if he's actually going to let that finish up or not, but I, I like it, right? Like making it seem like, oh, I'm just building Roaches, there's nothing to worry about. But what Reyna is actually doing, using all his minerals on the Zerglings, meanwhile, it's going to use all the gas on Mutalisk and maybe later Banelings. It is what we call in the business a bamboozle. Making your <laughs> opponent think one thing is coming and then you are doing a very, very different strategy. Ling, Muta, with melee upgrades as well, by the way. You're gonna have a lot of DPS and most importantly, a lot of speed. It's a really backstabby sort of strategy. Oh, the Overseer's coming on in. It's not too far away from that Spire. It's most likely going to see yeah. the Spire here, but it's quite late, right? That Spire is almost done. This is the first time that Serral knows what he's truly up against. Raynor gets a quick cancel on that fourth base as well. That's big, and don't forget, that the links of Raynor are going to be quite a bit stronger than the links of Serral. Yeah, they are going to have those upgrades. Serral's been putting his cash into the Roaches, and they're not going to help out too much when the Mutt-Mutts come on down. Oh, the links of Raynor getting a nice little choke point here. Serral's got a good engagement. The north side, the Roaches getting surrounded, turning themselves into Ravages to save themselves a little bit more armor on those cocoons. Plus one is about to finish up as well, and this is when these links become a lot more terrifying. Now most of the links have gone down already. We will get one Ravager. Where are those other units from Serral? Because Serral does have an army. Is he rallying stuff to the other side of the map, or...? And it doesn't look like it. I mean, the Mimash just covered in Overlords at the moment here for Serral. He's pulling them back. Uh, I mean, he's getting his Spore Crawlers now. He's also, uh, as soon as he saw the Spire, started producing Queens again for his anti-air. I mean, 11 Mudas have been produced already. Serral's gonna have to bring all of his Overlords back. This is starting to look really promising for Raynor. Serral's only on three bases. These Queens are gonna be enough, I guess, for now. 
One support crawler is gonna keep these Munas at bay. But I mean, Reyna is already going up to four bases during all of this. Yeah, and that's the big thing here is that Reyna is taking that econ lead once again for two maps in a row because he killed the, uh, rather canceled the fourth base there of Serral. And his side of the map is so safe because Serral has to pull back, all the way back to just not take damage from these Munas. Yeah. Oh, I like this run by though, but yeah, again, just very, very inconsequential damage. He's still down 10 drones. Yep, and he's down uh, uh, technically an upgrade as well, right? Because plus one missile attacks right now, not super useful. Eventually, it will start getting useful. Meanwhile, Raynor is getting plus two melee. He's getting Baneling speed as well. And often as a response to the Munas, players like to build Hydrolis. Hydrolis can be very good, but if they get flanked by a couple of Banelings, which I can only assume is the late game plan here of Raynor, that could become very problematic for Serral. Well, Serral's getting an infestation pit here, so potentially investors to try and catch those mutas, but it is a little bit dicey. Not really something you see too much, too often anymore to try and catch those mutalists since it became a projectile and since it doesn't actually hold things in place. As perfect as Serral is, I've always felt that he struggled a little bit going up against play cells like this, right? Yeah. Even before Reyna started taking games of Serral, as this run by is quite devastating as well. Don't forget these links have upgrades. This is going to hurt. And they come, and Hydroden's up here oh as well. Goodness. Those drones are just going to evaporate if they get off the mineral line. Thankfully, the Roaches of Serral are intercepting these lings. And they should be able to win an engagement even with that upgraded venture. Like you mentioned, Roddy, there is Carapace here for Serral's Roaches, and they are plus two attacks, so they are hitting pretty hard. The Queens also have plus two. They're engaging these units directly, but the Lings are Raider re reinforcing his DPS. Cutting through those queens, he pulls back to the sport crawlers, and Serral, he does hold on, but he's lost 20 drones. And look at this base, the base is actually oh! under a lot of fire as well. Serral is going to lose the hatchery too. Raynor is making some very good moves here. Of course, that costed quite a few units, but he's making moves now. Burrow is done, so this is maybe the moment where Serral can start counter-attacking. This could shape up to be a very epic game, because right now, everything is in favor of Raynor. Almost everything is going his way. Let's see if Serral can have another one of these miraculous comebacks like he's had in the past. He's had so many, and this would absolutely be miraculous if he come back in this game. He just doesn't really have an answer to the news. Oh, the Overseer has just caught the edge of those roaches, and now he can chase them down and pick them off. This is not, nothing is working so far for Serral. What I wanted to say before, like, Raynor started to take games of Serral with these strategies. This reminds me a little bit of how Scarlet used to play against Serral, right? And even though Scarlet wasn't quite able to win the series, he was so incredibly close multiple times, and I feel that Serral's always had some trouble going up against stuff like this. Yeah, the bamboozle strategy is working out right, but hey, Serral managed to squeeze past those Munis with a few pirate roaches. He does have to do so much work for drone damage. He <laughs> is down so many workers right now, and in a mirror matchup like this, I mean, it's just catastrophic. Now, Infestors are fantastic units here, though, for Serral. So the longer yes. this goes, if Serral can get up to like 165 or 170 supply, there is still some hope for him. But right now, things are looking very dire. Indeed, he is getting half a dozen drones here. The Roaches are not going to check out of this hotel, though they get taken down. That is an incredible amount of muters. Now, there is what? a Hail Mary play here for Serral. If he can catch those muters and kill them with, a, with, a, Fungal. with Fungals. How many Infestors do we have? I mean... Four at the moment, yeah. Four, that's not a lot of Fungals. Right. And the Baneling count is already at 27. 14 more Banelings on the way. Raynor oh, is about wow. to attack Serral with 40 Banelings. These will have to be the best fungals in the best position. Oh, nice fungal to the north side, catching these Banelings. But there's one where that came from. Another nice fungal from Serral. Trying to keep those Banelings away from the cluster of units. He's actually done a pretty nice job, but there is so much Raynor here. Those fungals were very good, but Raynor is not done yet. Serral so far hanging in, though. A few more Banelings coming oh. in from the left side. Another very, very good fungal by Serral. Chains those Banelings down, but now the Mutalists are here. As Serral doesn't have any energy to shoot up anymore, he cannot chain fungal down these Mutalists that are just tearing him apart from the skies. This is devastating for Serral. Only a single Hydra remains, and this is not enough anti air. This hatchery is taking a lot of damage. Raynor wants to get it one more time. He is going to be able to get it wow. one more time. Serral once again down to two bases. Oh, Raynor is poised to head towards match point here. He is looking so good right now, Roddy. He's got every single advantage, and he has not given any of it away. The Fungals kept Serral alive, but he is on life support right now. Make no mistake, look at the income difference. Wow. Raynor is destroying Serral in this game. Yeah, the NTI simply isn't high enough. The Infestors are very exposed here as well. Raynor is finding more damage. GG. Oh, man. Just like that, Serral came into the series. Nine and zero. And Raynor... He's on match point, he's got the advantage. One more map and Reyna will be our first grand finalist at the age of 17. Be ridiculous. I mean, a lot of people said before this tournament that if Serra was going to lose, it was going to be against Reyna. Other fans would be like, nah, there's plenty of other people that can beat him. 
That proved not to be the case up to this point, but Rainer is once again pushing Cerro to the limit. Oh, Cerro's gonna have to win the next two in a row, otherwise the reigning champ is out. Cerro has been here before with Reyna on match point, but then just coming back. It is dicey though. It's just the momentum. We were talking about the momentum before, and it is an incredibly important factor when you go into a professional game like this. These players, they feel that momentum. They feel the energy of those games. And like we've mentioned as well, this, this cocky kid put Cyril on tilt. Yeah, there is something about the way that he plays, something right? Something about it. And Cyril has been vocal about it in the past, like that shouldn't work and that shouldn't work and it doesn't make any sense, you know? And Rainer, with that big smile on his face and the Italian swag, he just <laughs> brings it along so well in the interviews. I mean, the last game though, it was just a very good game by, by Rainer. It was more than just a trick strategy. It was more than just keeping Cyril in the dark. I think the way that he executed almost everything, the moment those links showed up, don't forget it all starts with that cancel on the fourth base, right? And I feel from that point on, it was victory after victory after victory for Rainer that eventually led up to one big victory. Acropolis is going to be potentially our last battlefield here between these two players if things go Rainer's way. But of course, we have Disco Bloodbath if Cyril gets the win here for map number four. This is actually, I, I'm, I'm feeling a bit nervous here, Roddy. I feel like I'm a little bit worried here for Cyril. I don't want to lose his faith. I, I have so much faith in our reigning champ. But God, Reyna looked so good in that last game. Let's get into it, guys. In the bottom right here, is this his last game? Let me know, Anaheim, in the bottom right from NC Sports, the reigning world champion, this is Cyril. And in the top left, he only joined the WCS circuit in July last year, but has made such a great splash. He's on match point for his first grand final appearance in the world playoffs. He is Raider! <laughs> Pretty insane. <laughs> 17 year old Raider. I mean, it. It's hard to really understand all of this, right? Cerro is so amazing, so flawless, so dominant against pretty much everyone he plays against. But there is something about the things that Raynor does that really gets to him. And of course, Raynor is also amazing against other players in Cerro. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here, right? He yeah. wouldn't make it into the semifinals if he was only good against Cerro. But we saw him in the round of 16. We saw him have that nail-biting series against Hero, right? Game five, probably shouldn't have won it, somehow won it. It's a little more bumping and bruising on the side of the Italian. But when these two go up against each other, yes, Cerro wins a couple of times, but Raynor seems to win on some very important and big moment. And this is the biggest of them all. And there's something special about these two players. It is a rivalry, and it didn't take long for it to become so because they just keep meeting at the really <laughs> important moments. Nothing more important, of course, than the top four here of the greatest tournament of StarCraft II of the year. And, uh, I mean, Rainer and Cyril just always hang out. They're very friendly with yep. each other. They talk to each other a lot. Rainer, of course, talks smack a lot, says that his strategies are bad, his decision-making's just not quite right. Or he's like, no, 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 that's not how you deal with this, that's not how you deal with that. And, uh, you know, Cyril just holds that, holds that, has that cheeky grin and shakes his head at everything Rainer has to tell him. So it is a rivalry, but a friendly one, uh, but maybe less friendly <laughs> if this doesn't go Cyril's way. Yeah, no, even just right before the series, they're just casually hanging out backstage, talking to each other, talking about what they had for dinner. Went over a couple of the games in the quarterfinals. You know, nothing proved that they were about to play a very important best of five against each other. They like to hang out. They play practice games too from time to time, and obviously there are some mind games, right, that will come into play, because we only see the official matches that these guys play against each other, but we don't know what's happening behind closed doors, because even though these two are always likely to meet, there are so many other great Zerg players out there. But yeah, if you want to be the best, you have to practice with the best, and eventually that means that even Cerro and Raynor will practice with each other. Absolutely, the uh, hundreds or even thousands of times they've played each other over the last few years. We've got a very normal opening here for both players. Neither of them cutting any corners. We're not going to see that, uh, you know, delayed bailing nest from Cyril this time. Both players are doing a very standard, very meta, very safe CBZ opener. The crazy thing as well is that all of this started off so well for Cyril in the first game, right? Like, sometimes you have series where just nothing goes your way, and then you can say, it is what it is, it wasn't my day. But everything went perfect for him in the first game. You'd be like, oh, is the young Italian now going to fold under the pressure? Is this going to be too much for him? But the way that Rainer is bouncing back in Game 2 and Game 3, nothing but stunning. And I really did not see that coming after the first match. But here we are. Evo Chambers have been morphed in as well on either side. So far, everything is very standard. And StarCraft is always a stressful game, but I can't imagine playing like one map with your tournament life on the line in CVC. Like, 
That's just that's still brutal, man. I mean, Roddy, you just talk about the times when you're playing a, a tournament from your home, just an online tournament on your PC. You can't even handle that stress. So no. Can't even imagine what these kids are feeling right now on the stage. In the round of 78 of an online tournament with no prize money, even that gets to me. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking out. Yeah. Oh. These guys. I mean, like controlling links and banks with this much money, prestige on the line, legacy on the line as well. Of course, both of them already building up a legacy in this game, even with how young Raynor is. Well, this is one hell of a map between these two. We see the lair starting on either side, so Saro going up to his lair a lot quicker this game as well. Getting these extra gases, and uh, well, he is getting plus one attack. He hasn't got his Roach Warren just yet, he just starts it down soon. Oh, another plus one opening. Melee, that is, for Raynor. He's gonna try it one more time. Okay. I'm actually quite shocked to see that. I like once, I love it, two and twice in a row. It's like, ah. Cyril's not really one of those fool me once, fool me twice kind of guys, you know, it's a. Uh, I mean, there are players as historically like Stats who use the same strategy over and over again in a different map pool that actually it's always found damage against Serral. But uh, this is a different stage here, it's a different matchup. Of course, this map is a bit different as well. There is the Spire once again for Raynor. It's a very, very quick Spire. Serral did not see those gases go down. Serral's taking quite a few gases uh, for himself as well. More links being produced. It is, of course, important for Serral to pick up on this as quickly as possible. The economy is looking a little bit better on the side of the Finn this game. Don't forget, in the previous game, he was often trailing economically. Mm. And he's going to have an Overseer uh, in time here. The Spire is also That's near the scout. Overseer. That's a massive scout. There's one little link, seeing as a fifth and sixth gas are already being mined from. Yeah, we're getting a drone. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Just Serral thinks. Overseer comes in, confirms the Spire here. So Serral this game, like Roddy mentioned, a lot more economy and a lot more time to respond. Did he actually see it? Because the Spire is in natural. Definitely did. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what is Serral? Serral could potentially build nothing but Roaches and rally everything to the other side of the map. He could go Nidus because he's building three more Queens at this point. Now, of course, the fourth base, I said it before, that was crucial. The fact that Reyna was able to get such an easy cancel on the fourth base of Serral in the previous game, Serral needs to prevent that from happening again. And he has that roach advantage is something that, uh, you know, Reyna's army is a little bit more flimsier until those mutilers come out. Serral has that strong backbone of roaches and banelings here to stand and deliver against these lings of Reyna, which are going to try and go for a run by maybe a baneling detonation if, they, if they're lucky, but it doesn't look like they're going to get too much other than a scout here. A lot of queens being produced, so Serral obviously getting ready ah. for those mutilers. There is the infestation pit as well, the fungals last game, they were fantastic, they were on the money, but Serral was just a little, uh, you know, outmined in that game. He was outnumbered. No fungal was going to save him there, even though those were pretty good. Well, I mean, Reyna could try and go for a similar strategy here, where you get a ton of lings and try and force those fungals to come out before, uh, you know, drain the tank, if you will, before the mutilers come and join the fight. Look what's happening economically suddenly, right? In the last minute of this game, Reyna is not just going up to four bases, he's going up to five bases while also being on 78 drones. And now he's starting to make a couple of corruptors. All right, I am very confused about those corruptors. Yeah, maybe he thinks that he's being chased in Muta versus Muta here because the Corruptors do help you with that. But uh, otherwise, it is just a little bit weird to see. Muta's skirting on past that fourth base static defenses. They kind of look for this drone transfer here. It's a handful of drones on the outskirts there. That's four crawler, but the Mutas get pushed back. Oh. Obviously, Mutas can take down buildings. So if there's only a single spore covering a mineral line, maybe the Corruptors can help there. Ooh. This is starting to add up a little bit. These Mutas are starting to find the first few drones. There are a couple Double spore score. crawlers keeping these drones safe, but. It's some damage, right? Obviously, Raynor is always looking and hoping for more, but all of these little pickoffs, they do start piling up. And he found a window here where there's, the score is not covering and the Queens just pop out. They are on the chase. I think I'm with you, Roddy. I really like. I really feel like maybe a Nidus here from Serral could actually help him out a ton. He's just going for the Hydra Den now. He's just happy to just sit here and defend against these Mutas. But meanwhile, you mean you brought it up before and I'll bring it up again. There is a economic advantage for Reyna that's pretty substantial. Yeah, of course, the longer this goes, like if Serral, or Serral's army can become massive, then Mutas start falling off, right? Mutas are the fantastic fast unit that can fly around, pick off individual targets very easily. But if Serral gets close to maxing out, or a Fungal could connect as well, then suddenly these Mutas can start become a lot more impactful. Maybe Serral just didn't want to put it all on the line. Like, imagine if you start going for Nidus attacks and Banglings blow up your Nidus networks, right? Yeah, and then you just lost it all. And uh, we do see the lift down, the hive going down once again. Serral is stronger in the late game. Reyna knows it. Reyna respects it. He's going to the main base. He sees the hive is on the way here. He's bringing the corruptors in. Obviously, the corruptors do have caustic spray, but they're not going to be too helpful here. Going for the spawning pool doesn't quite get it. Getting the spawning pool means less spore crawlers. Uh, you can't make queens as well, which has all been the backbone of the defense of Serral. Look at what's happening economically. 87 workers on the side of Reyna Yeesh. right now against the 67 of Serral. Serral is just going to channel his inner turtler 
And he's like, all right, whatever wow. happens, happens. But I'm not going to move out and lose my crown of being the world champion of StarCraft 2. I'm going to sit back. If you want to defeat me, you're going to have to defeat me while I will get Lurkus. And we'll probably start getting Vipers as well. Yeah, definitely going to help out a ton against these Muters in particular. Shark is finding any damage. A fungal comes down here, hits four Muters. Looks like he's going to just pick them off there with the Queens. Plus to attack Queens, not bad. That's actually a very sweet pickup, right? One fungal. Maybe Rainer forgot about them for a split second. Zero's trying to scout. Obviously, it's important to know what your opponent is doing. Is there a hive happening right on the other side of the map? Zero has his burrowed roaches. And we know that he loves to start sending these to the other side of the map and start harassing a little bit. And there's more of the south as well going down to this base here. Zero just realizing he's down a base at the moment. Yeah. He comes across with those roaches. Rainer deflects those roaches. Easy peasy there, even though the Lings aren't too great against him. He's like, oh, okay. Serral is uh, very likely going to be heading towards Hives with the infestation pit of his own. Yep. I mean, eventually, the only way to really fight Lurkus is Lurkus, right? I mean, <laughs> maybe a greatest fire with a couple of Brutaloids, but in general, they are not very effective in this matchup. That's quite a few Banelings, but roaches are here. Plus two is almost ready. Uh, the Banelings actually get five drones there, strangely enough, and a handful of those roaches did go down, but they did survive. There's a lot of spores here in the main base for Serral. Rainer losing a few muters there. Yeah, really good job there by Serral, saving those spores, pushing out quite a bit of damage. Ten more mutas on the way. I mean, well, I think this is the definition of best muta over here. Getting plus two flyer attacks as well. Rainer very committed, really wants to make some magic happen with the mutas, but he's playing a dangerous game because Fungo is already very good against a lot of mutas. But if Zero gets a couple of vipers as well, yeah. the combination of parasitic bomb and Fungo, it doesn't really matter how many mutas you have, you're gonna lose all of them. Yeah, if you put all your eggs into one basket, then that just means there's no such thing as the player over committing to defending against it. All they need to do all Serral needs to do is erase these muters, and he's got this game in the bag. A lovely run by with these roaches as well. Serral taking a drone lead. I think Rainer's gonna go for it. I mean, with some big attack, because yeah, all of his here. units are on the right top side, so the harass here by Serral is impressive. Let's Whoop. see if the Lynx and Banes can get something done here, but there is a lurker, and that's gonna scare Rainer away for now. Now the roaches being annoying here. They've got 15 drones. Rainer is trying to make up those numbers. Both players with similar economies, but Serral still not cleaned up here. And that naturally he's got himself a choke point here against these lings. A very cute play from the finished player. Yep, Serral's playing very good. Look at that tank. He's maxed out at this point. He was behind, but he really did not panic. He's like, I don't got to make any plays. Mudas will eventually fall off. And Serral is slowly but steady heading to that phase in a game where Without exaggeration, we never see him lose. He just doesn't really lose it when he has a lot of money in the bank, when he has Lurkers, when he has Vipers. There was that one specific game on Thunderbird, but that's yeah. the one that he shouldn't have lost, which was, of course, against Raynor. Raynor does get an easy pick up on this fifth base. That is an insane amount of Mutas, but yeah, the how DPS are they is ever going to fight Maynard? Exactly. I mean, as soon as these Infestors are part of the battle, uh, he's going to have to fight Serral eventually. And Serral's army is just better. It's as simple as that. There's our first Viper on the way as well. Uh, he is coming in as well. All right, they come on in. There's a lot of queens here, a lot of energy. The Spore Crawl is even helping out. Caustic Spray here attempting from the Corruptors. If they can keep everything away from this Hive, it will go down. Yeah, sniping the Hive would be massive because a Hive is what you need to make Vipers. But Rainer is not going to be able to get it for now, and the Infestors were on their way too. I don't think so, mate. <laughs> uh, that fifth base is not going to go. Yeah. Well, we do have those Vipers, as you mentioned. They're starting to get higher and higher in numbers. Rainer, oddly enough, making a Ultralisk Cavern here to try and uh, you know, make use of this there's melee upgrades that he's invested into on his lings and veins. Uh, it's, it's tough to make happen in ZBZ though when you're up against lurkers and, uh, and roaches and ravages. I must say it's amazing that Serra can still oh, find damage oh, with roaches oh. on the other side of the Plus map. And attack. it's not just drones, he's getting the hatch as well. Lovely pick off there for Serral. I mean, oh, oh and oh, of oh. course he's never in one place at a time. He's up here at the fourth base as well. The fifth patchery rather doing more and more damage. And these lings are just really falling off against this late game army of Serral with these upgraded roaches and... That's just a lovely bit of trading here. You know what I love? Serral is getting a second player at this point, and that's absolutely not a mistake. He knows that Raynor really wants to pick off his hive, and he's like, all right, if that happens, I want to make sure that I can still make Vipers, because Vipers are eventually the most important unit of the Zerg army, right? Lightning Cloud, massive. Abduct, massive. Everything about them is super important. You don't want to lose your hive and then suddenly lose oh, your oh, ability oh. to build those Vipers. All right, Raynor, good luck, mate. They come the Adaptive Talon, Lurkers with plus three attack, Vipers with a lot of energy, Infestors maxed out on energy. The Muters aren't even engaging here, they're just going for what seems to be kind of a wonky base trader, just trying to do critical damage to Serral or try and force him home. But how does he hold this push? I think that's the best thing he can do though, because I'm Parasitic not sure. bomb! Oh, here we go! Goes for the Parasitic bomb there on the Mutalists of Raider! No, oh, he's trying to split them up, but he's not actually splitting them up. Oh, Raider! 
Ambrose, right and no! He took a wrong turn there. Lots of damage on those minions. Of course, they do regenerate quite fast, but he lost a good chunk of them right there. And don't forget, we still have plenty of infestors on the map that could land a couple of fungos on these mutas as well. And that's the big problem with making that many mutalists. They are fantastic in bouncing around and picking up little targets. But the moment that Cero gets his dream army, I don't really know what those mutas are going to do. Banelings do connect with a couple of the lurkers, but this is a painful fight for Raynor as well. Yeah, it certainly is. We got an attempt at a Nidus Worm in the main base of Serol, but the Lurkers waiting for it. Rainer doesn't have an Overseer with his mutas. He actually can't pick off the Lurkers and, and get that Nidus Worm up. He's trying so desperately to make Serol pull back, but Serol's not taking the bait. He is advancing closer and closer to the infrastructure of Rainer, reinforcing with a lot more Lurkers as well. And a couple of Ultras oh. on the way. Once again, Parasitic Bomb is going to land on these mutas. This time the splits are a bit better. But I mean, what are they doing at this point, Maynard? They're doing absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Cero is taking out base after base on the other side of the map. Oh my god, suddenly Oxless hits back the to Terrace and the wall in the Zerg Force Field. Cero <laughs> is ridiculous. And we're gonna go to game five. What a play, what a game. I don't care what you care about, what you think about CVC. These CVCs today have actually been so good. CVC has been good throughout the year. That's the one thing that you can absolutely not say about this matchup. I thought Ultras were supposed to break force fields, Maynard. What <laughs> happened over there in the end? Turns out if Best of Terrans don't subscribe to those rules. Oh man, what a play from Cyril. Keeping the Lurkers back from the Ultras. Inspired patience as well. When he saw that the muta play was happening for Raynor, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna be passive here, trusting myself to get to the late game and take it to game five. And that fourth base, right? How important was it? It just makes all the difference. Being on three bases in the previous game, Cyril fell broke. He always fell broke. This game, he made a priority. He got the support crawler immediately up at that fourth hatchery. He started dropping creep in advance as well. And he's like, as long as I get my four bases up and running, I am going to be fine. Because it doesn't matter how many mutas you make, eventually I'll have the answer. I'm, I mean, I'm exasperated here at how amazing these players are. Both of them, really. Like, we've been talking about how incredible Serral's play is in the late game. It's, but Reyna's ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with the greatest player in the entire planet is uh, just awe-inspiring. And unfortunately, we can't be exasperated because we're the commentators. We have so seen we Reyna... the back in ourselves somehow. We have seen Reyna do some really crazy stuff when it's the rubber match between these two. So, I can't wait, Maynard. Oh man, just start the game. <laughs> so I'm doing right now, I'm so excited. Disco Bloodbath, our final map between the two WCS champs. One of them will move on to the grand finale, and one of them will be excused from the tournament with a brilliant run, no matter how you slice it. I can't believe we're getting into it already. I thought we are going to have a break, Maynard. Oh my goodness, I'm not ready. <laughs> Breaks of the chumps! Let's do it on the far left here of Disco Bloodbath. The reigning world champion makes some noise for Cero! <laughs> And on the far right, already at his career's best, but can he do it one more time? This is Game of Origins Raider! Now all the maps are pretty big in this map pool, but I think it's safe to say that this is the biggest one out there. So if Raynor like, would have loved to do that plus one thing, I would have say save it for an eventual game five, right? On Acropolis, like yeah, it's a big map. But it's not the same here. I think that this map offers some more opportunity for those counterattacks. Because in that last game, the Ling upgrades, they didn't really shine, right? Like, they, they were never really able to pay off. They didn't find bases or queens or drones by themselves. So it really makes me wonder, what are we going to see here in game five? I think if you're Serol, you probably look at that previous game and be like, just sit back. Like, yeah. That's what I got to do. Come at me, bro. Mm -hmm. What do you got? I will defend. At least that is the, uh, you know, easier said than done, of course, at this level of StarCraft 2. The crowd getting their cheer on. There's some hype out there. The convention center is actually packed. It is actually packed. This is insane. So heartwarming to see so many StarCraft fans. The 10-year lifespan of StarCraft 2, 20-year lifespan of the, uh, of the franchise. It's just yeah. incredibly heartwarming. Time goes by really fast. Raynor born in 2002. Yeah. That's when I walked to the store to buy Warcraft, you know, and I was like, I'm ready to play some games on the ladder. Oh, man, yeah, I was playing Warcraft 3 back then as well. Or the Frozen Throne. And now least. he is in the Grand Finals, well, semi-finals yeah. of the Global Finals. One map from the Grand Final. It is crazy. It's been an amazing year for both of these, of course. Whatever happens here happens, right? Only one can advance in the end. They have divided the WCS circuit. Reyna was allowed to win winter and summer, Serro won spring and fall. But now eventually only one can make it to the grand finals yeah. here.
That's right. I mean, how, whatever happens here in this map five, this has been an incredible run for both these players. Mm -hmm. We know there's tons of fans for both of them. A lot of people are about to be disappointed. A lot of people are about to be really excited. But that's just what it is in a 1v1 esport. One player must fall down. The thing is, I will be both disappointed and excited, no matter who wins, right? Yeah. Like, when Cero loses, I always get a little sad when Cero loses, because Cero normally never loses. But it's impossible to also be sad, because Rainer is such a likable guy, such a fantastic Starcraft 2 player. Just an, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say one in a million talent, but he's truly a very special individual. And if, like, for instance, a Neep or a Cero wouldn't have done what they did over the last few years, like, how unique is it what Reino has already achieved in his career? It's crazy. Like, in the old days, we had different tournament winners over and over again, right? Nobody was able to win two tournaments in a row. And now in the last two years, I mean, of course, we had Maru in Korea as well, but that's a different region. It is truly spectacular what Reino has done already. And talk about the game a little bit here. It's actually not a ton to talk about right now as uh, Rainer and Serral squeezing out the drones that they need here, flooring out a few more links. Serral going for a bit more link production at the moment. But as far as the build goes, as far as the structures and tech being thrown down, very standard and very much mirrored up. Yeah, I don't think game five here over semifinals at BlizzCon is uh, where you're like, you know what? Unless you're classic, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but that was just the craziest thing we have ever seen, okay? We have never <laughs> seen that before in StarCraft. That was nuts. Uh, I, I think in general, on such a big map in particular, you want to play it a little more passive. And of course, there's always stuff you can do in the mid game with the roaches, with plus one, with Nidus networks, maybe a hidden spire somewhere. Like all of this stuff is possible, but you probably don't want to put it all on the line with early game link bane aggression, because this is not really the map for it. It's simply a little too big. Lair a touch faster here for Serral. Reyna getting the roach warren before the lair on his side of the map. We are seeing some differences in the strategies from both players. Serral also getting extra gases. What? Serral's the one playing plus one? All right. Oh my okay. goodness, Maynard! Gonna see some spy play here from the from the Finnish player instead of the Italian. Wow, okay. Take was a turn again. Like, I feel like we're just... This is the craziest best of five. I mean, they both just do one thing and then in the next game they're doing the opposite. It's like, no, now I'll play normal. Now you can be the one making the link. Now you can be the one making the slightly different upgrades. I do believe that this is a much better map for this playstyle than Acropolis was. I agree with you. Like you said, it's a it's an incredibly big map. It is thick with two Cs, this map. It's so wide. A lot of, uh, you know, especially flying units, so much potential for them to dart in and do damage. But there's that Spire from Serral. Yep, the very quick Spire. And let's see what Reyna decides to do. Reyna is just building a lot of drones, by the way. I mean, obviously, he's got Overlords on the other side of the map. He has a couple of safety zerglings. But Reyna, there's one thing you can say about him, and that is that he's playing scared. He's not playing scared at all. He's playing this like he's supposed to. Saro, of course, doing the same thing. Often a little bit later, wants to get just a little bit more information to be 100% sure nothing crazy is happening. What is Reyna going to do? Is he going to drop a Nidus network? Is he going to build Queens? What is it going to be? Well, looks like Roaches so far, he comes in, he sees the extra gases have been taken and fully saturated by Serral as well. Quick scout, by the way, Lynx getting on top of this fourth base here. That's a quick cancel, so that's the first victory here for Raynor, who is indeed making quite a few Roaches, but it's going to take a long time before Roach speed is done. Certainly, but I think there's a window where the Roaches are actually incredibly threatening for Serral. He's making so many, you don't really sit at home with that many Roaches. Yes, I know. I mean, I feel like you need the upgrade. Slow Roach is just not that intimidating. We have a drop -a lord morphing as well for Rainer. We'll take a look. There's a very fast overseer flying into the main base that is going to see that the Spire is there. But at this point, you see it's it. done. What do you do? Spores and pray. Make more queens. Similar to Ser Serral's sort of instant reaction is you get more spore crawls and queens. But of course, Serral would also go for the infestation pit and go for fungal to counter the muters, which is just such a rare response. A lot of players really prefer just going hydras. The tables are turned once again. Plus one flyers on the way for Serral here. He is playing exactly the way that Reyna was playing in the previous game. That's a lot of Zerglings. Getting a pick up on the spore crawler is massive because that's going to make it a little more doable for the mutas to do damage. Serral does not get the spore, but he did damage it quite a bit. And Reyna is going to go for the infested park here. Both players trying their own kung fu fighting styles against each other and seeing which one can do it better. All right, just turning those roaches oh, into Ravager go. Cocoons to save them against the Lings. Good control from Reyna. Yep, didn't lose a single unit there. I believe that Drop Lord is heading towards the third base of Serral, so maybe we can take a look at it. Banelings. Ooh, these are Banelings as well, oh, getting some economic I think damage done. Work. Other muters pop out, but Serral doesn't look like he's seen it just yet. He's not paying attention. Banelings drop for Reyna, a quick pullback on those drones. He's only lost three so far, but seven, not bad at all. Very nice damage from Reyna. And Serral is replenishing those numbers, but actually, finally enough, their economies are still pretty similar. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that fourth base, by the way, is quite damaged already, and I find that very, very scary for Reyna. He does have the queens hovering around here, but eventually, if these queens are out of position, if Serral gets an easy pickup on this hatchery, this is going to be a very dangerous game for Reyna, who does have five investors on the way already. I feel like those are very quick. Of course, they won't spawn with Congo Grove, but he will be able to have it roughly 20 seconds after they spawn. And going for the four calls here, of course, that's minerals and burn damage if you pick it off. Serral just continuing to make more and more links, catching those roaches away from the spore crawler. Any damage these meters can find is going to be fantastic to Serral. Yep, right, can the floor one more time, and Serral will succeed in doing so. The main base Ooh, feels a little exposed. Obviously, most of the queens are on the low ground there near the fort. That means the Reyna having a lot of confidence there in that one queen, and obviously there are multiple spores there, but if you pick up one of the spores, it opens up a massive hole in the defensive Reyna. By the way, Serral juggling those mutas did not lose a single Mutalist during that scuffle. And Mutalist, one of those Zerginists that really regenerates so quickly, dives on that spore crawler, it's very damaged, so down it goes. There is another one on the fallback here, we've got a backup spore crawler. Reyna also making a second one to the right-hand side of this hatchery. Serral respecting the spores though, keeping those Mutalists alive, and he's making a ton of Banelings right now. Yep, 17 Banelings, and I believe they're morphing quite close into these Mutas, but the Infestors are out already. Serral's gonna try to kill two bases at once, is this the play? Is he going for the third and the fourth at the same time? Uh, it looks like that might be the case. Roaches are waiting though, it just seems like Reyna's expecting this. Let's see, maybe Serral will not Waiting here. for speed. Over. He's gonna pull the investors out of position for the majority of the Bailings there. The first fungal does whip. Bailing speed is done. Oh, we've got to be at least some nice fungals here from Reyna. The Bailings bust on through. They get rid of one of those four crawlers. They haven't found a ton of damage over here though, but of course, Serral has a one two punch. The Bailings coming in from the north side. Reyna has it left. He hasn't seen it. Down go 14 drums oh and the hatchery. Oh my god. You're not looking for one second, and Serral will punish you. That is the damage that he was looking for, but that's also the damage he desperately needed. Look at the production there. Vipers are on the way. We've seen it in the previous game. Parasitic Bomb is one hell of a spell against Mutalis. And so far, Serro is still just making links. Thanks to Mutalis. More Bailings rolling in. Oh, the drone's stacking up a little bit. 11 more going down. The drone's pulling back. They're dying a little bit of mining as well. They're pulling the Harvest Sidons here, but... Rain is overseer, swinging on through, seeing where his economy at. He knows he's behind in that work account by a lot. Uh, this time the Banelings are dealt with very nicely. Serro is still making nothing but Lings, Banes and Mutas oh, though. And these spellcasters are very good against this composition. We've seen it before. Maybe Lings can start helping out there. How many investors do we have out currently? Five, six, I believe it is. Six investors, but three Vipers as well. Those spellcasters can absolutely win the battle for Raynor. Oh, it looks like Serral's gonna dive on in here. The roach is being split very nicely though. They're really clumped on the left-hand side. In come those rats. Oh, he wants those, those parasitic bombs. The Muta's getting split a little bit here from Serral. There's that parasitic bomb on one Mutalist. But a great split there from Serral, pulling that in afflicted Mutalist out of the pack. But I'm pretty sure that Serral is shocked a little bit. He's like, whoa, Vipers already? Immediately there's an infestation pit going down. But I feel normally Serral transitions a bit quicker out of this kind of stuff, right? He's really committed with all these Mutas, the plus two flyer attacks as well. And of course, Serral is leading damage. But right now in a straight up fight, Reyna could absolutely win. And he's trying to dart away from those fungals, of course, picking off as many queens as possible, getting away from the vipers as well, like Roddy mentioned. The spellcasters really seal the deal in a couple of Look at the drones going down, 19 drones went down, another oh. bailing run by here on the south, and at the same time here at the fourth oh, base. Again, Serral just cannot be slowed down. Zero chill from the Finnish Phenom, 30 more drones, and yes, Reyna does have a scary army, yes, his army technically counters Serral, but he's gonna have to do it off the back of an abysmal economy. It really felt that now Serro has finally found the damage that he was looking for, and he's not stopping. 17 more Banes on the way. Once again, the spellcast oh, is out of position. Like, how has there only been a single parasitic bomb so far? That's finally the second one. It's a lot of damage. You yeah. can see that how quick that happens. But I think Serro has done a fantastic job in avoiding those Vipers and Infestors. And I mean, rolling in Baneling wave after Baneling wave. Now he can transition. Of course, Serro can maybe get his own Lurkers or something among those lines, right? Yeah, indeed. Oh, look at the gas loss difference here. I mean, of course, Reyna, keep in mind that even though Serral's lost more than Reyna here as far as gas goes, Reyna has not had the money to replenish those numbers. Serral's economy has just been beastly. And the Muda count is so high, and they have pretty good upgrades as well that they can actually start going for a couple of these buildings in the main base. The Vipers are here looking for a parasitic bomb. But it almost feels like Serral's just doing that to distract Reyna. More Bailey's oh, rolling in. The hatchery's so low! No way! Down it goes! These plus two attack Banelings. 
finding that damage and getting through, or just walking straight past the roaches and rolling into that hatchery and picking it off, and Serral just doesn't stop this magic. At this point, it feels like Serral is beating him up. It's oh, like, just bro, just those two maps you took of me, my perfect record, you're gonna pay for it, Maynard. And once again, Serral, similar to Reyna, going for the Ultimus Cavern as a follow-up here, once he got the Hive. Going for the Lurkers, picking off at whatever he can, splits on the Muters, grabbing those Afflicted ones out of the pack Perfect. so quickly! Oh my god! Whoop, whoop, a little bit closer to the pack up there to the north, but that's okay. I mean, he's still ruling this map, Reyna can't leave his base. Reyna has no vision either, right? He's in the dark, he just has no idea where these hits are coming from. At this point, it's like a boxer that can't see anymore, he's getting hit, but he can't see those punches coming. And he's got a few chain bungles here, but I don't know if he'll kill that many more Mutalisks as they escape to the right-hand side. And the Ultras are going to be a problem for Reynard. <laughs> oh, Lurkus! Oh, nice Lurkus, yeah. Very nice. Lurkus make it a little bit more doable. Reynard trying to do whatever he can. He's still hovering around 160 supply. I wouldn't do that too often, by the way. <laughs> Soaking up energy from my hive. Yeah. Against all these Mutas, it's a dangerous yeah. play. How many hatcheries has Reynard lost in this game? Yep. A little bit too many. We have some nice chain fuggles here. All right, cluster of muters on the left hand, gonna go down. Oh, nice parasitic bomb, and that stacked up muter cluster as well. Yep, that's oh, a lot of Oh, he's not splitting, he's not splitting, he's not splitting. Now you probably want to disengage for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, pull. Let's, let's get those out of the pan. Yeah. <laughs> let's let those cool down a little bit. That's uh, that's quite a bit of DPS there. Like we have barely had time to look at this, by the way. But if you take a look at the mini map, the entire map is getting swallowed by Serral. Meanwhile, he's even taking the left bottom side during that non-stop aggression. He has been transitioning. He is stacking up at home, but at the same time, he's also expanding, saturating his bases. And even though all of his meters are half on HP, he still finds a way to pick up the Hydra then as well. The balls on this kid. He's going for the Hydra Den himself so he can get towards Lurkers. And seven Ultras in production. They're going to have Kiteness as well as pretty nice attack upgrades. And when those Ultras come, he's going to have giant frontline damage. With a lot of hit points. It's been one out of a series and it really felt like the reigning world champ was on the ropes. Being down 2-1, just not looking that good in the two games that went into favor of Raynor. But like so many times in his career, and that's what's so special about Serral, he seems to be turning it around once again when the stakes are so incredibly high. Uh, Rainer just closing the door here on his base to make sure that this one is <laughs> safe for now. He has been losing a few hatcheries in this game. Yeah, well, he's not able to get yeah. too much. Serral, any damage you can do with these muters is nice. The time of the muter is kind of done, even though he's invested a lot into them. But, uh, you know, the Banelings, the Ultras, the Lings, of course, are oh, going to be the big no. one too. Oh! Oof. Okay. I wonder what those Infestors doing. Well, that's what the Ultras are here for to cuddle those infestors to death. <laughs> well, they're almost, uh, the final upgrade is almost ready. It's gonna, gonna make, make them move a little bit quicker off creep. Lurker is gonna get picked off as well. I love that Serral brought an Overseer with his Muta pack. These Ultras are not going to be stopped. It's a lot of Banelings in the mix as well. Fungals on the Banelings, pretty good here from Raider, but the Ultras don't care about those Fungals. They charge on through. Damage from Raider's army though, that Lurk account doing all right. He's cutting through the Ultras very nicely actually. That frontline of Serral just disappeared. I'm surprised that Serral didn't stick around there because there was barely any anti-air. Now the Vipers show up, they're gonna land some more Parasitic Bombs. One of these Parasitic Bombs doing quite some damage. Don't forget, of course, Serral has been quite a bit richer than Reyna during all of this. That wasn't the prettiest fight for Serral, but given the economies that we've been working with, I would say it was acceptable. And look at the bottom of the screen right now. The gas tank for Serral, he can replenish this. He's rich, he can do, he can, he can throw away units. Of course, if he keeps doing that cost and efficiently against a very turtling player, then it will eventually stock, stock up, especially when Reyna starts to secure a few more bases. Gonna get a Nidus network now on the side of Serral as well. Obviously, his links have amazing upgrades. And you really have to respect them. And the duck, a duck does land on one of these overseers. There are two changelings in the main base, by the way, for uh, Serral, so he can actually get vision and maybe drop one of those Nidus networks. Oh no, the Roach just took care of it. Look at Reynard, he's killing changelings, Maynard. Yeah, he just Six. hasn't slowed down. Well, nice catch here, getting a few of those Banelings. Or would it be Banelings, just Banelings for now. And these Banelings run by us from Serral were absolutely catastrophic for Reynard, but they've been very well handled so far from the Italian. Ever since the Lurkers got out, right? That just made everything a bit easier, but this is still oh. a very intimidating Zerg army. Now, Lurkers can be useful. I like this round, this, this yeah. concave of Sporecrawlers, though. It's going to make the Ultras into a bit of a funnel. It almost feels that Serral should be attacking the initial four phase of Raynor, right? I feel like that's the weakest target. Nidus Network does go down in the main base. I believe we have plenty of links and Banes out there, but the Roaches are going to shut this down. A couple of Lurkers here. Is that going to be enough? 
Well, we'll see. It looks like the Lurkers are not long for this world. The Ultra is getting right on top of those Hydralists. Rain has got a step in, bringing in those Infestors just for Infestitarians. Anything to try and slow, slow down these giant Space Cows. Oh, but the Lurkers coming in to join in. They have a Duck Talents. They're going to chase them down. Whoa, this Insane Lurkers damage. Good Lurkers shots indeed. Great splash on those Ultras. Wow, fantastic hold by Rainer, who's still maxed out during all of this. Still shutting down Nidus Networks as well. And yes, Zero is still richer. Zero has more bases. That was phenomenal by Raynor. It was, and like I said, you keep trading inefficiently. Eventually, the other guy is going to catch up even with the worst economy. The Roach Roach just sees the, the Nidus Worm here with that Roach coming out of the main. Yeah, but it could be anything. Raynor perhaps getting a little over eager here, now even feeling that after that fight, he can start attacking. He does have a lot of Lurkers. Roach is in Hydras. Well, these things are very strong, but I guess that's going to be enough for Raynor for now. Raynor picking up a base. He's fighting back. The Italian is not out of it yet. Absolutely not. Oh, all the tech the Lurker Den. Oh, and also the nice one's got a bunch of units in it. Getting the Lurker Den's massive here. Serral's just trying to get some upgraded Lurkers or even on any Lurkers whatsoever here to try and fight back. Lurkers are so important in this matchup. Rainer, can he make this happen here? He's pushing forward on the nice one, which has so many units in it. Get out of there! Yeah, everything that was stuck in there would have actually gone down, but I don't think too many units were coming in. Ultras oh. coming in from the south side. Bailey's collapsing on these Lurkers as well. It looks really close, but Serral might just have enough. The Lurkers are doing so much damage for Rainer. Oh my god, it's close! Oh my god, it's close! But Serral just breathes a sigh of relief as he pushes Reyna back, barely! Yeah, but 15 Hydras on the way, 18 Roaches on the way for Reynor. That did build up a little bit of a bank because he just wasn't losing anything for the longest time. Serral is taking the entirety of the left side of the map, but I do believe that he needs to start rebuilding that Lurker then, right? Playing ZBZ without Lurker. Oh! Yet. The Mutas chasing down these Vipers here, they've gotten a couple. Nice catch there, but of course the Mutas are getting phased out a little bit. Kind of done now for Serral. Making more units now is an absolute mistake. Making all these banes is so expensive though. Serral really doesn't have that much money in the bank. These banings are going to get cancelled as well. Rainer's army looks very big. He's actually at 40, 50 supply up. Oh my god. Is this it? Rainer oh is ahead so much. Army supply, Roddy. And these Ultras have not been very good in this match. They have not found that edge for Serral to seal this deal. He's had such a brilliant game, but Rainer's done everything right, seemingly. He's coming in from the left hand side. Those Roaches, no problem, but they put her out of harm's way. That is a sick move as well. Rainer is actually so close, winning a super late game game against Serral. But Serral had all the time in the world to make the right moves. Can the Ultras do it here for Serral? The Lurkers on the right hand side doing so much damage to the Ultralist of Serral. Picking up one more Ultra on the backside. Nearly goes down almost barely. Catching some drones as well. The finished Serg's economy, that lead that he had, not so impressive anymore. He just doesn't have many minerals. He's got a lot of gas. But what does he do with it at this point? Yep. We haven't seen any investors coming out of Serral. He is in trouble. He had the map. He had Rainer cornered. He had all the time in the world to figure out how he wanted to close it out. But Rainer just kept on surviving and suddenly. Oh my goodness. What is it when these two play against each other, Maynard? This is, it can never be normal, can it's it? It's just always something special. And our world champ is on the brink of elimination here, guys. Reyna chasing down this Ultralisk, and these are things that Serral cannot afford to replenish. He's making whatever he can right now, but it is no... Uh, make no question, this is desperation here from Serral. It's a lot of links as well, and links, like, yes, they can be good in picking up a couple of targets, but the Lurk account oh. is still so freaking high. Serral does finally pick up a couple of roaches, but he's down 70 supply. Oh my god. Still expanding though on the right top side. We can counter attack a little bit. But the Ultras, like you said, they just haven't really been delivering, right? They haven't they just been feel, doing it in the big fights. They just feel so clunky in ZBZ. Lurkers and Hydras and Broaches just seem to really dumpster them. And with Rainer just making these little Sim Cities and also just making, you know, just keeping his, his Lurker army alive and making sure that they're always in the right place at the right time. So Ultras just haven't found the damage. More Vipers being produced. Now, of course, the links are incredibly well upgraded, so any link counterattack can be devastating. The Lurkers, you don't really want to have them uh, one by one. Lurkers are fantastic in big numbers, but having like one or two Lurkers here and there is not really going to keep you safe. I mean, every second that goes by is a good one for Serral because Rainer is maxed out. Serral is nowhere near maxed out, so Serral needs to buy some time for himself. What an epic game for us. Absolutely. Oh, it slices. It's looking good for Rainer right now. This has been an incredible series, an incredible year for both these players. Link's counterattack here. This is a lot of roaches, though, by themselves, right? And that's not going to do it. Nice Ultras catch. Ultras very nice catch. Yep, are going to be able to take care of these roaches very quickly. The Link's picking up a couple of drones as well. Where are those lurkers? The lurkers on the right-hand side securing these roaches here. I mean, that the lurkers is the problem here for Serral. He's been making more vipers. Vipers can yoink those lurkers out of the ground into the loving embrace of these ultralisks but it is just hard to make happen, especially when Reyna has his own anti-air here and his own Vipers.
Uh, these roaches are going to be in some trouble as well. They might be able to pick off an ultra. Instead, they're going to go for the hatchery. Really wants to get that hatch. Can the roaches get it done? Yes, they can. We'll get a final couple hits off. Zero is slowly but steady, though, buying more and more time for himself. These drones are drones that he would probably love to save. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be saved at all here. They're trying to pull up to the north side, but that's so much DPS in this army of Reyna. Which only, uh, you know, I mean, has plus three attack, and that's kind of the big problem here for Serral. The links do pick off that hatchery for Reyna. This is an absolute bloodbath of a ZBZ here. The Lurker count is mental. Six more Lurkers. I think we're looking at like 20 Lurkers on the side of Raynor. I just don't see a way how Serral fights that. I don't think you can oh. fight that. There are 19 Lurkers. This base in the right top side is going to get shut down as well. Serral can't fight his army. He needs to r run around at this point. But there's no way you can run into 20 Lurkers. Oh, a lovely usage of Lurkers here for Raynor as well. Just running on the left-hand side, harassing that base. Serral cannot split his army up. He already has a problem with small armies flying. Oh, one Ultra being baited into an attack there, losing a lot of hit points for free. Lurkers are just amazing. Links are gonna, still going to try to counterattack. Serral wants Raynor to turn around one more time because I think he looks at his arm and he's like, I can't actually fight that. Maybe one by one, maybe if the Vipers can start picking up Lurkers one by one, but if Serral runs into 20 Lurkers, there's almost no way that ends well. Oh, these Link's going to do a lot of damage down here, yeah. but how do you break that Rotterdam? I mean, I don't think Serral wants to fight it, and I think that's the right call. These links are super well operated. Wow. Raynor can make links as an answer. He has to send units. He has to send a lot of units, because these links are feisty. I think Serral's just trying to get a little bit more Viper energy, maybe blinding crowd those lurkers and catch them while Raynor's not looking. And Link's still alive here, just catching a few more unit kills. But Raynor, oh my god, the lurker count. No, you can't. You just can't. I think I just <laughs> threw up in my mouth a little. There's so many lurkers, oh my god. But if Serral loses that base, he's just down to no mining at all, and he knows it. Four more Lurkers on the side of Raynor. Raynor is basically maxing out on Lurkers at this point, but why not, right? What's the Viper count on the side of Serral? Has Serral been able to make a couple Vipers? Three. three. This is not convincing. Against the two of Raynor, by the way, so Raynor could maybe abduct the Viper as well. Raynor's trying for a counterattack, but the Lurkers are there to intercept. This is, I believe, the only mining base for Serral on the far left. That army, Raynor, that army is ridiculous. I mean, Raynor's really not mining a lot either, but Raynor does have an insane amount of lurkers. These links are being annoying. They're running around. Serral's trying to do whatever he can to buy time, but he only has 37 drones. And I'm still not really believing in the army that he has. Yes, he's got a lot of ultras. He's probably setting up a magical flank eventually, but how do you flank 20 plus lurkers? No, it's, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where, yeah, you might get the flank and it might be even the greatest concave you've ever had in StarCraft Life. But there's so much lurkers that it might not even matter. They'll just fight from inside of the concave and win. Look at that spread of lurkers as well. It's, I mean, blinding clouds aren't going to work here because they're too spread out. That is so many lurkers. 28 lurkers at this point. A fungal will land. Serral is kind of positioning his army like he almost wants to go for it, but he's going to need the most magical blinding clouds of all time. And here we go, Serral comes forward. The DPS of these Lurkers is insane. With the adaptive talent, so he can lift up these Lurkers and pull them out of the clouds, and Serral knows it. He pulls back. This might be the final moments in this phase. Oh, a Viper goes down. That thing had a lot of juice on it. Double of Duck there as well. Reyna's going to get another Viper. Viper. He gets both of them. That's two Vipers going down on the side of Serral. Serral is still counterattacking with Lynx, though, but... Is working with so incredibly little. I believe Serral's trying to get the right top side running again. Still making ultra. Serral's trying to be as annoying as he possibly can, but this is just an absolutely insane army on the side of Raynor. He killed the Lurker Den, so Raynor can't make any more, at least for now, but I don't know if it matters anymore. I think the Lurker Count's reached critical mass where Serral just doesn't have the right composition anymore and he just doesn't have the ability to do anything else. Base rates are scary as well, by the way. Serral still has, I mean, obviously the option to go for all the spicy links. <laughs> it's very important for Raynor that it doesn't start firing out of control, that he doesn't start losing too many buildings, because then he could potentially get eliminated. But does but does Serral even have the better army for a base trade? I just don't think so. No, but that's when you base trade, right? Raynor's <laughs> the worst <laughs> army. I mean, like, I, I think technically if Lynx keep counterattacking, if Serral keeps avoiding this army, I mean, Serral is down quite a bit. I don't think Raynor has about this army, uh, base on the right top side. Ah, uh, Serral was trying to borrow the roaches and catch those lurkers. Oh my god, Raynor coming in from several angles here. The, roach, the Ultra is taking a lot of damage. Yoik's there on the Overseers, obviously can't grab the Ultras, but that's just it! The right 
something was on the wall, and Raiden has done it. He's eliminated his rival, the reigning world champion, out of the WCS Global Finals. And Rina, the 17-year-old Italian teenager, is going to be our first grand finalist for the biggest StarCraft tournament of the year. Guys, make some noise for Rina, our first grand finalist. What a series, what a game five. This story has been building up throughout the entire year. They kept meeting each other in all these circuit events. A lot of people said that if someone was going to dethrone Serral, it was going to be Raynor. Well, here we are. We got our first grand finalist of BlizzCon 2019, and it's Raynor. A brilliant year. Like we said in that series, when Game 5 was getting closer and closer to wrapping up, both of those players had an incredible year. So no matter who went through, they had to be proud of themselves. But of course, when you're a competitor like Serral, nothing is better than the win and Reyna will be the one to move on. Let's go to the stage with Reyna in space. Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations, Reyna, 17 years old, and you are in the Grand Finals. How satisfying is it to not only make it to the Grand Finals of your first ever BlizzCon, but to do so taking down the defending WCS Global Champion, Cyril? <laughs> it's amazing, obviously. I have no words, actually. Um, Cyril is really good, so I'm really happy that I beat him. So yeah, I, I hope I can win the whole thing. It would be amazing, yeah. <laughs> A lot of chants from this crowd who love you so much. And I feel like every time you play Cyril, it's such an exciting series. This series, without exception, was so amazing to watch. Let's talk about Disco Bloodbath, because we saw a sort of reversal of strategies where Normally, you're the one that goes mutas, but this time around, it was Serral, and then it turned into a very long game. Walk us through that, that map. Uh, I, was, I was not expecting the mutas, actually. So, um, yeah, <laughs> he was owning me for a good part of the game, I feel like, but like uh, mutas really suck the longer the game goes, so uh, I just wanted to survive. Uh, I knew that if I could survive somehow, I could maybe win the game. Uh, yeah, so it was a very exciting game. <laughs> And now, as you mentioned, you are in the Grand Finals. Is Classic or Dark on the other side? Are you worried about either of these guys, or are you going to be lifting that trophy today? I'm going to win. <laughs> Raynor says he's going to win. This crowd loves that answer. Casters, what about you? I, I, I said earlier that I couldn't be a bigger fan of Raynor when he said, uh, obviously, I can beat Serral, but uh, that was wrong. I am now an even bigger fan of Rainer, and I'm absolutely going to be cheering for him going into that grand finale against the either Classic or Dark. Oh, man, what a historical moment here in the, in the arena, man. It's for crazy. many can't reasons. Believe it. For many reasons, right? Like, it's not just the victory over Serro here, but it's the way he did it as well. This time, it was not Rainer being very far ahead and then closing it out. No, Rainer was behind. He said it as well, like, things were not going his way. He just tried to survive. Rainer clawing a, uh, a game back from being that far behind, and then even winning some of these uh, Viper skirmishes as well. I mean, if you're ever going to beat Serro, this is where you want to do it, and that's how you want to do it. Just fantastic. You never want to play catch-up against Serral, but Reyna did it, and he did it beautifully. And a well-earned seat in the grand finale. He'll be facing Classic or Dark, which will be the next series. Any quick thoughts on that one, Roddy? I think it's going to be amazing. Dark has looked stunning, though, in pretty much all of his games. He looks on face, but Classic, he did it before. He's the last proto standing. Maybe he can do it again. Well, stuff's really hitting up here in the semis of the Global Finals. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, it is going to be Classic versus Dark. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of BlizzCon. Facebook Gaming, a world of play. Samsung SSD, performance gamers trust. Corsair, do your thing. And by NVIDIA.